Welcome back to the Visser Podcast, where we break down the science, strategy, and solutions for living longer, stronger, and having a better life. I'm your host, Dr. Richard Visser. Today, we're diving into a topic that, frankly, I think is under-discussed in the longevity conversation, fast-twitch muscle fibers and your motor unit. And I really wanted to bring this point back. Most people think about their heart health, glucose levels, maybe bone density when it comes to aging well, and that matters, okay? But what's flying under the radar is your fast twitch muscle capacity. And what I mean with this is, you know, when you were young and you were doing hopscotches and you were jumping over a tennis court net or you could easily jump from amazing heights down, catch yourself, uh, tuck and roll, the whole thing. I mean, just the way young people move, the way they react to stuff, the way that's your fast twitch muscle. That gets you out of trouble. Okay. That's your ability to react. That's the brain communicating to the nervous system that innervates the muscles, especially type two fast twitch and says, I need you to do this, you know, pivot, tuck, roll, um, jump, twist, you name it. If you look at skateboarders, young skateboarders and how they're moving their body and everything. If you look at any, any type of tennis match with younger people, as we age, we slow down. We all of a sudden realize, you know, after midlife, you start realizing that, oh, I'm not that, you know, I'm not that quick as I thought. I don't trust myself to jump, you know, as high as I used to. Um, I'm more careful with stuff. This is the decline that we're seeing with the fast twitch muscles. Now, slow twitch muscles, uh, fibers, number one fibers, we use for like, you know, jogging, walking, uh, you know, all the slow stuff we're doing. And as we age, this increases, this innervation stays increases. The fast twitch muscles though, after midlife, we can see a decline up to 30% per decade, which is massive. Okay. This is the part where we start looking at falls. We start looking at not being able to manage uneven surface as well. We start looking at not being able to pivot quickly, not being able to re react as quickly. And it's not about necessarily the muscle. Well, it is, but it's about the innervation of the muscle. That's why we call it, you know, the motor nerve system. Okay. So it's, you got to think about it. It's one, the brain being able to send that message quickly. All right. Secondly, it's the wiring going down to the muscle. Okay, so is this frail? Is doesn't it, you know, it doesn't have good insulation anymore, whatever. And then finally, the innervation into the muscle. Is there enough fibers innervating the muscle? And as we age, that diminishes. So we're having a huge problem with this. And if we continue our, our, you know, aging and our prevention of aging, uh, as we go past midlife, a lot of us will slow down everything. We'll start jogging. No one's sprinting. Um, we're taking up yoga, Pilates. We're doing all this slow stuff, which is good. Don't get me wrong. It's good, but we're losing at an alarming rate, our innervation to our fast twitch muscles. And if we don't use it, we lose it. So really, one of the things we have to be doing is focusing on this. Okay, so today we're going to go in depth how you start to focus on this and what things help you focus on this. Because it is extremely important. So as I said, again, slow twitch fibers or type one fibers, are your endurance fibers. They build for sustained efforts like your zone two cardio, cycling, long distance running, walking, you know, that kind of stuff. I would really advise you, unless, unless you're a jogger, 
I don't want you jogging. This is slowing everything down again. Sprinters don't jog. Okay, sprinters sprint because it's a complete different system. So we're going to have to learn how to sprint. Sprinting is a learned method. It's not just jogging fast. Okay, sprinting is a learned method. So we're going to talk about that too. So jogging, again, is a slow moving, repetitive, on an even surface type thing. Now, I want you jumping from rock to rock. I want you having uneven surface. I want you to be able to do that again. So we're going to start training that. I want you to be able to pivot mid-air. I want you to do all these things. And that is where you're recruiting your fast twitch fibers, your type 2 fibers, right? Sprinting, jumping, heavy lifting. These are your get up and go fibers. And like I said, especially past 40, we start losing fast twitch fiber at an alarming rate. So if you're not sending signals through these pathways, right? They prune themselves away. They're gone. So the murder nerve unit is critical for aging. I can't stress this enough. But here's the kicker. Fast twitch loss isn't inevitable. It's preventable and to a degree reversible. So that's what we're going to talk about today because I want to give you solutions. Okay, fast twitch matters for longevity. It's key for longevity. And I don't see many people talking about it. You might be wondering, okay, I'm not, you know, planning on running the 100 meters at the Olympics. Why does this matter to me? Well, that's a fair question. Because falls are the number one cause of injury related to death in older adults. When you stumble, you need explosive power and quick reaction time to catch yourself. That's fast twitch. Most people fall coming downstairs, not going up. And it's because they can't decelerate fast enough. Another fast twitch. Okay. Beyond that, fast twitch fibers are metabolically active tissue. They burn glucose. They stabilize insulin sensitivity. They prevent, you know, frailty. Um, they prevent falls. Huge. They're also a hormonal advantage. Strength and power training stimulates testosterone and growth hormone response and the natural endocrine support for aging. In short, training fast twitch muscles keeps you independent is what we want. We want to live long. We want to live independent, metabolically healthy, hormonally supported, and yes, really alive. Okay? We, I can't, Iterate this enough that when we age and if we're looking at our parents, we're looking at our grandparents and we're looking at, you don't want to end up in an elderly home. You want to be able to live independently as long as possible. You don't want to count on having a team around you that needs to like carry you, take you to the bathroom, uh, make sure that you're not falling, uh, etc. that you're breaking hips because this is what happens. I'm making sure that this doesn't happen to you. That's why we're doing strength training as your basis, okay? And then we're adding to that, naturally, we're doing zone two cardio in the background, right? And we're adding to that this type two activation, okay? That motor unit activation. And that's going to be called yeah, the type of work we do in this space is called plyometrics. Okay, that's the uh, plyometrics is the closest that it comes to. So we're going to look at plyometrics um, to see how we can resolve this, to see how we can train this, to see how we can stop the denervation, de innervation of the muscles, that we can get more nerves involved to the muscles, and that we keep this agility so you can be like a cat. You know, at age 70, 80, 90, and still be able to move quickly, react, be able to avoid falls, avoid, you know, um, be able to move on uneven surfaces. If we go into the motor units, this is where the magic happens, okay? Your motor units are like electrical wiring, okay? As you age, the wiring frails unless you maintain it. 
studies out of McMaster's University and from Andy Galpin's lab show that motor unit number and recruitment capacity are critical markers of neuromuscular age. Older adults with better preserved motor units maintain strength, balance, and agility. That's what we want. That's exactly what we want. Now, if you're, if you're not training the system, your brain starts forgetting how to recruit these fast-firing motor units. But if you, if you stimulate them regularly, you preserve the communication lines between your brains and your muscles, neuroplasticity, neuromuscular junction, integrity, they all stay sharp. Think of it as this. Your brain needs to text your muscles daily or they lose their number. This is how we age, man. All right, let's get tactical. Here's how you train fast switch fibers and your motor units efficiently, safely, and sustainably for longevity. Remember, we're not trying to become Olympic sprinters here. We're training for life, okay? We're really training for life, for independence. Okay, so I want you to do this two to three times a week. Um, I want you to do heavy resistance training three times a week, okay? In that include compound lifts like squats, deadlifts, presses. Aim for 75 to 90% of your one rep max. Focus on speed of intent. Even if the bar moves slowly, your effort should be explosive. Keep your reps low. Three to five sets, great. Plyometrics twice a week. Low impact jumps like squat jumps, box jumps, even medicine ball slams. Start gently, especially if you're over 50. Focus on quality over quantity. Work in short sets, three to full reps, full recovery, sprint interval training once a week. Okay, so your sprint interval training needs to be once a week. Okay, so you can do bike sprints, rowing, or hill sprints. The protocol is 10 to 20 seconds. Well, I like 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, sprint all out, followed by two to four minute recovery, whatever you need to bring your heart rate back down. Start with four rounds, progress to six to eight rounds. Next, multi-directional training. Okay, I need you, this is critical and often overlooked. Lateral lunges, rotational metabol, medicine ball trolls, agility ladder drills. Okay, as we age, we lose movement diversity. Multiple direction work keeps our neuromuscular system adaptable. Okay, so we need mind-muscle connection, motor unit activation drills. And this means twisting, turning, mid-air, having your brain really start, you know, focusing here. And, you know, when I, when I do this, and if I put a program together that's pretty difficult, I mean, difficult in forms of, you know, there's a lot of uh, one-legged stuff, uh, unilateral work. And then I'll go into rotation and I'll go into box jumps and I'll go into long jumps and then I'll go. My brain gets tired. It's amazing. It's not even my body as much as my brain. And these are short bursts that we do. And then we rest two to three minutes in between. Okay, the drills. So this is where I want to get you going. And we're going to start very slow in this. Um, I'm also going to put out a video where I'm actually doing it so you can see it. Um, step by step because it, you need to really start slow um, simple drills like isometric holds um, light band resistance exercises or focusing deeply on the co uh, contraction you know even emg studies show you can enhance recruitment just by thinking about it and of course recovery these are demanding sessions so sleep hydrate Protein supplementation has to be there, yes, daily. And protein at 2 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight. These are non-negotiables, okay? So get your nutrition set, get your sleep set, um, you know, so that we can do the work. Training fast twitch fiber isn't just about doing the work. It's about recovering from it, okay? So as we age, our recovery becomes more important. We need to let our body recover. And that's why I'm saying two to three minutes of rest in between the short burst sessions. You know, 
It's not the training that makes you stronger, it's the recovery from the training. And for the neuromuscular system, recovery means sleep quality, target six to nine hours uh, you know, a night, nutrition, protein, anti-inflammatory foods like our Mediterranean-based diet, hydration and electrolytes, cold therapy, could if you need it, show some promise. And don't underestimate meditation and breath work. We talked about this. It's a very important. Parasympathetic activation helps you bounce back faster. Okay, so let's bring it home. Fast twitch fibers and motor unit preservation isn't optional. If you want to move well, stay independent and live longer, live a vital life, start where you are, progress slowly and stay consistent. It only takes two to three times a week, you know, added to your sessions that you're already doing to really start doing this. This is about designing a personalized system to get you in your highest potential. And this is one of those high leverage systems. By investing just 20 to 30 minutes a couple of times a week, you're literally changing your biological trajectory. Really, it is this important. It is this important. And no one's talking about it. No one's doing it. I don't see it being done. Yes, I see it being done with college athletes. They're trying to get to the next level. Olympic athletes, we've done this with them. Um, I've trained Olympic athletes to four different cycles of, of Olympics. Um, so that's why we used to have these. But as we age, that's exactly what we don't do. You know, it's funny. As, as we age, we don't, do, we don't do a couple of things that are vital to our longevity. One lifting heavy weights we start you know it scares us we stop doing it we don't want injuries wrong secondly fast twitch moving jumping uneven surfaces we start avoiding that kind of stuff right because we're afraid to fall exactly we're doing the opposite thing as we should be doing so this is critical and that's why this is critical we're going to have more on this, so don't worry about it. This is just kind of an introduction. I want to get this really, um, I want you to, to, I want this to trigger you about thinking, um, about your programming, about what you're doing in your training. It's super important. I need you focused on this, and we're going to slowly build this to where you will have a complete program that's going to put you up top, that's going to get you to the 99 percentile of people out there in the longevity space. Stick with me and you'll have the best life you've ever had. Thank you. See you soon.